let's be honest, right? We're all in sales. I'm in sales, right? My goal is to work with real estate agents, right? You're in sales. Your goal is maybe buyers, sellers, investors, whatever. At the end of the day, it's all, it's all marketing, right? And it's like everyone lives and breathes and operates on different channels, right? Whether it's email, do you check your email or do you have a 10,000 in your inbox, right? If I look at my, uh, my inbox, I, if the email isn't read, it means I have to open it and read it. If I look at my wife's inbox, there's 10,000 emails and I get anxious looking at it, right? Um, text message, what do we prioritize when we communicate? In person, um, phone call, right? And then we dive into social media, which is a massive topic, right? Where do we spend our time? Is it Facebook? Is it Instagram? Is it TikTok? Is it YouTube? Is it LinkedIn? Is it Twitter? Is it Pinterest? Is it blah, 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 right? For most of us in real estate, if you're completely lost on where to start and where to focus your time and energy, energy, especially if you want to post more, you have to ask yourself, where is your network? Where are your friends? Where are your family? Where's your database? And where are they all hanging out at? And that's where you should prioritize your time. It seems like when I teach this class for most of us in real estate, it's either Facebook or Instagram with a few exceptions, TikTok, LinkedIn, whatever. But it seems to be those two, right? If we narrow it into Facebook and Instagram, then we ask ourselves, um, all right, well, if we're going to post content, what should we post? And then the question is, which I guess will lead us into kind of point number one is algorithms. Now, the algorithms, no one knows how they operate. We all have our own theories on how they operate. We can only assume things, right, and make, make assumptions. But they do give us clues. The algorithms will give us clues from time to time, usually when they release new things or they change things. And there'll be little suggestions. Maybe you've seen them before, right? Where it says, hey, click here to check this out or do this. Um, that's an indicator that if you lean into that new thing that they're pushing, right, like threads, I know Instagram is pushing threads, which, and I, I feel like all these thread notifications, I'm just ignoring it. Like, no more. I don't want to do any more things, right? But they're pushing it so hard and they're pushing the algorithm, they're pushing it in my feed. Um, reels, right? Instagram is competing with TikTok, right? Over short form vertical video, right? And that's been a hot thing. They've been pushing that in with the algorithm. So they've been supporting people who are pushing out short form video that's usually 90 seconds or less. Um, that's vertical, right? So when we lean into the algorithm, if we're going to lean into these platforms, um, that's some ideas on, on content we can create if we're doing that. Leading us into our next segue, video. Who here is creating videos uh, for their business? We got one. And posting them. Yes. TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. I was good for a while, then I didn't. Okay. Now I have a lender partner, so okay. we are accountable to one another. Today. Okay. Um, and this is a sidebar, but like my ratings have gone down on TikTok. I have new followers, but the ratings have gone down. Okay. But that's not going to stop me because I know it's just the yep. content. It's the push out. It's, mm -hmm. You're going to get the flux in numbers, um, and it's just doing it. <laughs> yep. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah, you really got to feed the machine. Yeah. Yeah. But not knowing stories versus reels versus this versus yeah. that, and now threads and what is it's that? Too much. How many seconds are each? And it's too much. Banners over them or music yeah. over them, and you're like, I just figured this out, and now we're moving to a new wave of um, rules for all the things coming out. Who's posting this content for you? Me. On all platforms. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna talk about something that will help you. I offered to hire my teenager, but he passed. <laughs> Bummer. Good idea. All right. Good idea. He yeah. Passed. Okay. Good. So let's, we go in a lot of different directions here. Let's talk about um, one more concept. There's too much. So I would say that's amazing if you're po posting multi-platform. I'm a big believer in that. And I'm going to share with you all my workflow on how I try to do that as efficiently as possible. Um, I use a third-party company called um, repurpose.io, which I'll show you, which automatically pushes my content out. I'm a big believer in creating video content. For those of you um, that may not want to do it, uh, I would encourage you all to do it. I teach a class on how to do it. We actually all make a video in the class. I give you topics and ideas. We shoot it and we edit it. And then if you want, you can post it if you're brave enough, right, to get you over that step. Because here's why I love video is the algorithms love video um, because it's just statistically more engaging, right? And if I can post a video and, and it can reach, right, I don't know, whatever, even a hundred, if not thousands of people for free, right? And I'm just top of mind. I'll sign up for that all day long. That will be one more thing, one more pillar in my channels of communication in addition to everything else I'm doing, right? Um, and what I'll do, I'm a big believer, is if I'm going to make a piece of content, I am going to run through that content 
and push it out on all the platforms because why not, right? And I use a third-party system that automatically does it all for me because I don't have time to do that. I used to do that. I mean, it would take me about an hour just to post them all and do it. So I'm a big believer in like, yeah, at the end of the day, like if you want to get technical, it's not perfect, right? In terms of how each algorithm works, but it's good enough, right? So that's where we're headed. So next up, let's talk about um, posting. So it seems like most of us maybe aren't doing video. What about, are we looky loos or are we like also posting content do we want to post content i post i'm just sort of yeah. doing it at a okay. high enough frequency yeah i will do video but again i just need to be committed to the frequency and that's the part that i find most daunting is just carving out time blocking the time to do it yeah yeah i don't have any problems being on video or putting myself out there or anything like that it's the time blocking piece that i struggle the most with okay Anyone else? Boasting? Looking? I just don't know how to... Like, I don't want my personal Facebook and my friends that are on there, like close friends and family members, to just yep. be bombarded with marketing. Sure. So I never know how to strike that balance or if I should just only do marketing on my business page, in which case, how do I even have that... Like, how do I know who it's going out to? Those are the things that I struggle with. I don't know okay. much to do. Let's talk about that, right? Let's talk about bombarding our audience. Well, first things first, um, the algorithm, uh, it, it, it all comes down to what you're posting. And, and again, like I'm, I'm just regurgitating what some smart people are saying that I uh, think they know what they're talking about is when you post on uh, typically Facebook or Instagram, um, usually that content is shown to about 10% of your audience. And depending on how much engagement it gets, that's going to determine whether or not essentially unlocks that next percent of people who are going to see more of that content. Is it, it only people on that you're like friends with or does it actually ever leave your sphere? Good question. So, so it depends, right? Depends again, what you say when you post, right? Are you writing something in your caption, are you using hashtags, right? That might get found on the explore page. So the answer is yes and no, right? If you're using that in theory, right? It is possibly pushing out to other channels that people might see it on. Um, but if your content isn't engaging, um, right? No one's gonna see it anyway, right? And by engagement, we're talking beyond just liking and commenting, we're talking with someone saving that post, right? Sharing that post. Um, I'm always thinking like if I put something out on social, if I was on the other side of that coin and I saw it, like, what I care, what I want to save it. Is it just another photo of a house or is it like something valuable? I'm all about like, what kind of valuable content can I share? And what I do is I always think about like, what are all those commonly asked questions that I get, right? Um, beyond just title insurance and escrow, right? We, we can answer those questions, but I really lean into the marketing. And I have a rule I always share this is if I get asked the same question three times, um, I make a video about it because now I'm creating efficiency with the questions that continually get asked to me. I share it on social. I put it on my email drip campaign. I put it in my blog post. I put it in a Facebook and Instagram ad, right? Because clearly people want to know these answers. And I'm sure all of you sitting here, there's all these commonly asked questions that you get asked that maybe you're just used to answering that people want to know, right? All right, we're coming up, it's April, right? Is now a good time to sell? Like, what should I know before I sell? What are the three mistakes that most sellers make before they sell their home? Like, what are the stuff we need to know? You can answer all these little questions in just bite-sized videos. And if not video, if you don't want to do video, it could be a post, right? It could be anything you want. But I'm a big fan of leading with value, right? Um, that's the type of content that I like to create. So if I lead with value, will someone save that? Will they share it? Will they push it out to someone? And that's telling the algorithm, hey, we should show this to more people, right? And that's the goal. Um, there's always that common question of uh, like how much business versus how much personal. I think it's subjective, right, to you. I'm a big believer though as like I'll show you my Instagram. Um, I got two, uh, which I don't recommend. Uh, I've got two going here is uh, I typically run and share content of value. Um, now I've got two channels 
And this is this is my Mile High Title Guy channel where I'm sharing um, resources, tools, marketing ideas, things that have been working. Um, and there's not so much personal stuff on here. Now, back when I had only one channel, which is my main account here, I was mixing in kind of this content with my personal stuff. But I think we can all relate. Like if we do post personal stuff, like typically that gets more engaging, right? If it's with my kids, if it's with my dog, if it's with me traveling, if it's me with my family, right? This is more my personal stuff. I think if I'm just going to make this up, I'd say most of majority of your content should be like that personal stuff that you post. Um, with that value add stuff kind of mixed in there. But in addition, um, you can have your stories, right? You can share your stories of the everyday, day-to-day -day life, real estate stuff. Like people are going to know you're a real estate agent. And I agree, like you don't want to shove it down their throat. Hey, I'm a real estate agent. Use it, use it, right? Do it more in a strategic way where every once in a while you post something or you're doing something of value, you share it in your story. Um, Is this a business Instagram? So we're going to talk about this. Great question. Yes, this is a professional Instagram account. Both of my Instagram accounts are professional Instagram accounts. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Professional? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this real quick. If you have an Instagram account, it should be a professional account. Because there's only upside to it. Because when you take that leap over to a professional account, you can choose either having a creator account or a business account. And what happens is you unlock, for both of them, you unlock different things, but you unlock all these great algorithms and, excuse me, not algorithms, all these great insights on um, are people engaging with your content? What percent of them are your followers that are seeing it versus what percent of them are random people who found the content, right? Where do they live? What's their age range? Um, like all this great content and details that you want to know about. Um, in addition to that creator versus business, um, for most of us, I would lean in more towards creator if you want to have access to more song choices and stuff like that. Um, I found for the real estate agent, typically creator is going to be a better option than business. Um, but I would choose one of them. There's only upside. Question. Show where the upside. Uh, my Instagram, when I created back in 2012, yeah. I still have it. So it was as a personal Instagram, and then it, it, it gave you the option to change it into a, a professional. So that's how I have it right now. I'm thinking right now about creating a, a professional one, because so since my 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 Instagram has so much life for me from yeah. over a decade ago, yeah. kind of like a whole mix from yeah. before I was a real estate agent yeah. and stuff like that. So. So my question is, what are the possibilities to reach out to more people as a professional account than a business or personal account? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, in theory, from what I've read, the reach is going to be the same from an algorithm perspective, but you're going to have more tools and data at your disposal when you have a professional account where you can see the insights on what's working and what's not working. That way you know what is working and where to lean into. I'm still using all the hashtags and I try mm -hmm. to like come up with something and you know, once you hit a hashtag, you can see, okay, this, whatever you type in there, it can show you, okay, this many uh, people has used it or how many people view this. Yep. So I'm trying to reach for whatever it has over uh, 100,000. Sure, sure. Only, and even doing that, I don't get the, the response that I, I'm hoping to. Yeah. So. That's a good question. Let's talk about hashtags. Can you can you repeat yeah. his questions or anyone? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. On yeah. Zoom, so yeah. Can, yeah. Yeah. Good question. Yeah, good point. So let's so let's first dive into hashtags and algorithm and and what can we do to have the most successful post, right? Well, first things first is um, content is the most important, right? It is if someone the algorithm is picking up, right? If I'm scrolling. And I'm looking at something, am I watching it? Do I pause and look at it? So first things first, whatever you're posting, whether it's a photo, carousel, am I going to take the time to, to look at it, right? Video is statistically going to get a longer watch time because it's, it's, it's engaging. It's something, right? Assuming you set it up properly. Next up, from an algorithm standpoint, is what you write, what you type out, your caption is just as important as the hashtag, hashtags you're using. Instagram, I don't know, two years ago, shifted their whole search functionality 
on how things work. And it's not just hashtags anymore. It's what you write. All those keywords that you're writing are also um, getting pulled within the search section and the explore page um, when people are finding stuff and stumbling upon stuff. So, so take that into consideration as well. I don't try to get too hung up on hashtags um, just because it's tricky, but I do try to focus on those smaller hashtags, right? I don't want to post, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to use hashtag real estate because there's probably millions and millions and, and right. What's the purpose of a hashtag is it gets stored in this hashtag page where if someone searches that hashtag, they're going to see your content. And if I'm posting hashtag real estate, it's there for a millisecond and then it's gone. It's getting pushed down by everyone else posting hashtag real estate. So we want to be micro-focused, right? Like, I don't know, Colorado Springs real estate agent. Hashtag, hashtag moving to Colorado Springs. Hashtag, I don't know, Colorado Springs military. Like, I, I, I again, I need to put myself in the eyes and the brain of like, who the heck, if I'm trying to get my content, right? Who the heck is going to look at it? Are they going to search? What are they looking for, right? I'm always trying to flip the coin. It's a great question. And you know, I'm always trying to think outside the box and think. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah, you're right. That I feel like if I do real estate, there's 5,000 agents in the state. Right. Maybe just in cars. I don't know. Right. I'd get more niched down. Back to uh, the end. So I'm trying to come up with something like, okay. I mean, sometimes in like crazy stuff. I'm going to put notes right there. Right. Maybe somebody else is here. And you also need to ask yourself is like, who's your target audience? Who's your ideal avatar? Yes. Right. Like, that's important too things like that i'm always trying to do something different right whether is it is it whatever you're involved with um is it the community is it something religious is it school is it something with kids right and think about like what they're doing and living and breathing and searching and try to focus your attention into getting into their feeds but you know i think it comes down to no matter what you do with hashtags i think you have to kind of like boost it up and promote yourself and pay so somehow you get exposed more to the public uh, like three days ago i posted a short video on tiktok and then i was so proud because i never got uh, 5,000 views yeah. within uh, four hours. Yeah. This is the highest views I ever received. Yeah. Uh, I always get started with like maybe 200. Sure. And then uh, on the, uh, Instagram, I maybe see, I get three views. So I kind of yep. point them, so. Yeah, no, yeah, no, it's a good point. So we're going to hit a few more segues, discuss yeah. is um, boosting a post, running ads. Um, but let's also, let's take a moment to just talk about getting caught up with views and followers and all that, right? Because I think that can be deflating for, for all of us, right? The way I look at this is um, how many, how many like if you're a real estate agent, how many deals do you want to do? How many new clients do you want to work with this year, right? For most of us, I think it's fair to say maybe less than 100. I don't know. Um, that helps me uh, accept that I don't need to have 100,000, 200,000, a million followers. I just need to have right? Say 50, a hundred people that I, that I can relate with that like my content that connect with me, right? I'm a young dad with kids and I like to travel and I like to nerd out on marketing and right. And, and kind of do things like that. Um, and, and if I can find my people and I can connect with them, like that's my goal because they're going to be the best people to work with anyway. I don't know if that's, is that true? Did you reach that many followers on, on Instagram? You get paid just for having there is a paid system where um, I actually am a part of it through Facebook where um, if, yeah, if you're putting content out there and it's getting enough um, engagement, yeah, you can, you can make some money off of it. Um, but I think it's a significant number of, of people. Yeah. Yeah. Since, yeah. Uh, people yeah. They got like three, one, three is, yeah. Like, and, and they out like, oh my God, you guys have a luxury life. And, uh, yeah. Right. And just, like, the influencers. And, and yeah. Pictures. And I was like, yeah, see. totally. The other thing I look at too, is like, even if I can just use social media to just stay in front of my, my clients, my people, my friends, my family, like that's a win. I really see that as a win. Like if I end up meeting someone through it, which happens, right. Um, and, and it ends up turning into, to, to a great relationship and, and whatever, like right? that's a bonus for me. I just see this as, as one more resource. Cause we live in this fast paced environment, right. Where it's so hard to stay top of mind. And I don't know what the stat is, but it's not in your favor of when someone's ready to buy or sell, are they thinking of you? Right. 
you need to be in front of them. And unfortunately, it's getting harder and harder because there's so many distractions. Okay. So I see this as one more tool where we can stay in front of them. Now let's segue into uh, what we're going to be speaking on April 18th on uh, targeted ads. Let's just... Before you do that, will you show, I think you had a question, how do you take your account? Everybody here probably yeah. has an Instagram account. Okay, yeah, you're right. Take a regular account, yep. turn it into this professional account so you can see more. Perfect, great question. Actually, does it have a Instagram? You so don't. It started here. While you're doing that, can you answer just this sidebar? Is there any data right now for the age use of Facebook versus Instagram, and does it matter? Like, you know what I mean? Is Instagram still the millennial kind of category and things like that? Does it really matter at the end of the day? Should you be tailoring your content for the platform users? I feel like TikTok is a wide variety. Well, you're going to ask our best friend. I just did the same thing. I love, I I just, love this. Just typing it in. <laughs> and while that's doing that, just... Yeah, see? If you guys aren't using ChatGPT, I would highly, highly suggest it. I took Jared's suggestion, and I've kind of run with it. So while we've been sitting here, I came up with a video that I could create 30 seconds or less about the uh, uh, prices of Colorado Springs homes. Gave me the full script, and it gave me how I could edit it, like like captions and everything done. Just to give you an idea, right? If you're concerned, like, what do I post? Yeah. Boom, done. Yep. Um, and then the other one, hashtags, I just said, what are the top 10 hashtags you would do if you were uh, a real estate agent in Colorado Springs looking for people that are looking to move here? And then spit out 10 hashtags. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> we're going to dive into ChatGP. I'm going to show you how I efficiently use it to do a post. But to answer the question, according to ChatGPT, <laughs> the largest age group on Facebook is between age 25 and 34. Oh, I just turned 34. Uh, but it also has a significant number of users who are 35 and older. Okay, that's big. Uh, Instagram, right? 1834. Um, interesting. So it kind of it doesn't really give us any, a, a plain answer. But I would go back to to what you're already doing is you're posting on both anyway. Yeah. Right. Because why I'm posting not? everywhere. My yeah. YouTube, my TikTok, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. But I just wonder if there's maybe some sort of tailoring that needs to happen, or different hashtags to pull people in on Instagram. Sure. Then you start getting into, you know, sure. digging too deep to where you're going yeah. to start tailoring stuff. But I yeah. just wondered if there was a good age group. It's a good question. It's interesting because I teach this class and it's always different. It's always different. There's there's young millennial, you know, Gen Z like all over Facebook, and then old pe I don't know, like yeah. whatever, you know, old people that use just Instagram. It's always across the board. Here's another question I always ask this. Let me ask you this because I'm always curious. When you open up, let's say Facebook or Instagram, whatever, right? When you open up either one of these platforms. You kind of either do two things on the home screen. Your option is to either uh, look at stories up top or to scroll the feed. If you are someone who opens up the platform and scrolls down on the feed, can you please raise your hand? Stories? No. Neither? No. Stories? <laughs> See, I'm always... Can I I'm... open it at like a market... Sp- market? <laughs> oh wow so you're shopping so it's interesting because the behaviors are always different every time i ask that question the answers are different or I just open it, click does on that matter every I'm time just curious it does matter now that, now that you say that it does matter okay, my son just started his own facebook account that he would open my facebook account and go on the marketplace right away interesting so i don't know if that affects that's what? fascinating but i've tested between a post and a story and I don't know why I never post stories, mm-hmm. but it gets double to triple the, the views. Sure. You know, engagement, sure. at least the views. Sure. So, so I'm frustrated that I forget about the story use, but it's because I am a scroller, yeah. not a story. So, so let me share a quick <laughs> tip. Let me share a quick tip. When I open up either of my platforms, I look at stories. I don't scroll the feed. I go story, 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 story. Okay. So guess what? I'm mindful of this and I know everyone's different. So whenever I post content, like I just posted this this morning, whenever I post anything on the platforms, specifically Facebook, Instagram, I do my best to then share that as a story because I know there's other people that are out there like me who are scrolling stories and they're never going to see my post unless I share it in my story, right? So my point is like here is 
Uh, oh, shoot. Are I, you thinking it's I didn't on post the screen? It. I'm going to post it right now because it's not up here. Wait, um, Jared, are you thinking it's on the screen? Oh, is it not? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing it. You're not seeing it? Oh, shoot. All right. Uh, is it because I'm on the hotspot? Uh, crud. Now your phone was just on. It did? All right, hold you up. Lost for a second. Now you lost it. Oh, shoot. Oh, bummer. Do, do, do. So I'm going to go MacBook Pro. All right, it's screen mirroring. It just screen mirrored. Oh, here we go. Can we see? Ah, uh, crud. One more time. One more time. All right. Oh, I have... what, what time do we have until? Is it 11? 11? 11.30. 11 we do. So you have some time, Jared. Okay. All right, we can see this. It's a little laggy, but we're good. All right, here we go. All right. So finishing this comment, whenever I post something on social media, I always share it to my story because I know there's people that are only going to see it if I post it to a story, right? So I posted this this morning. Let's add it to my story, right, real quick. Okay, cool. It's in. Um, by the way, we're doing a dodgeball tournament. It's lined up on the tomorrow. So I've been hyping that up for uh, real Look estate agents. Jersey. I know, Chicago title, Amazon.com, 40 bucks. You can get anything on Amazon.com. Got a baseball jersey, got a sweatshirt. Um be- intuitive figuring out how to share it to... I just do share right here. I hit the uh, the paper paper plane, right? And I do add to story. That's it, real quick, right? And then it's going to push It's gonna push more engagement. I know it is. Um, Next up, so back to the lingering question. Let's talk about if you have an Instagram account and it's a personal account and you want to switch it to a professional account, I'm going to show you how to do it right now, all right? So first things first, if you do switch over to a professional account, it's going to become a public account. So if you're trying to keep your account private, this is not best for you. Outside of that, I believe that everyone else in real estate should switch over to a professional account because you get access to additional analytics and information on how your account is performing as well as other features. So if I wanna switch my account over to a professional account, which means either a business or a creator account, I go to my profile, bottom right, I'm gonna click on uh, my profile and now it takes me here to my home screen. Top right, the three lines, some call it the hamburger. I'm gonna click on the hamburger and now it's going to give me a ton of stuff, right? Um, I can then, oh, it's been a minute. They moved it on me. Um, I can then go in here and um, try to find the section where I can switch to professional, which I don't see because I already have a professional account. So let's do it another way. Um, on my home screen, someone do this with me. On my home screen, I'm going to hit edit profile right here in the middle top. You see edit profile. And when I click on this, it's going to show my name. It's going to show me all my information, my bio. But then at the bottom, right, it's going to show me all this additional information um, on whether or not it is uh, going to be a professional account. And are we doing it right? Cool. So I got it right. Edit profile. Yep. And then if it's not a professional account, you click the button that says switch to professional account. Okay. Once you switch to professional qu- account, it's going to ask you a couple questions, right? It's going to ask you if you want to connect your Facebook page. What's going on? No, no, we're good. We're good. Instagram, edit profile. What do you see? Yeah, that's where I'm at, but I don't see the... You don't see switch to professional account at the bottom? Edit? Where was that? Are you on your computer, though? I am. That's different. What about your phone? Do your phone. So, yeah. You need to get oh, Do your phone. Okay. There's nothing wrong with just not posting, too. Like, some well, agents... Not both since they okay. anyway. Yeah, so just, let's do this together. I have to start from the ground up. I, I opened an account, and I think Step it's one. a post on, on there. My son made one. Or, no, I liked someone's. He showed me how to make it show up on my page. We're getting there. So Baby the, steps. Robin, the edit yeah. profile is in the settings. I got that part now. Okay. It's over here. Professional account. That's where it is right oh. there. I'm a data person, so I like the Perfect. sites. Okay. Now, my Google page is the main monthly you like data analytics and how many people visited your website. So yeah. I do love switching over. Where is this? Uh, so here's your here's your information. So you're already you're already a professional account, right? So categories real estate. You can connect a Facebook page, which mm. you don't have. Um, contact options, you could you can have that be public information if people wanted to contact you, right? You could have a call to action button. Um, and you can display it on your profile. How are we doing? 
So when you click on profile, that's what other people see. Oh, yeah. Create, and a profile? Creator portion. So once you get to the profile... Yeah, choose switch to professional. professional. Yep, hit that. Yeah. Okay. But in the professional account, I don't see where it says creator. So what's the next question? Just follow along. It probably says, what's your category? You yeah, can category. You choose real estate agent, right? That's where so, she is. Okay, so click, click real estate. After that, it asks you. And then after that, creator. business or creator. See, it looks yeah, like this. Look right here. Did you get to that? Yeah. She's already listed as real estate agent. Maybe going to change. Yeah. And just try to do it again. Type in real estate. What are you hearing about Facebook eventually being only video or primarily the content is mm, engagement posts? Okay. I mean, you've heard that, oh, we heard that for the last few yeah, years. Of, like, you better start posting yeah. video because that's all it's going to be. But I feel like the other platform is supporting that. It's weird because it's always it's changing. Good. Yeah. And for the longest time, I was hearing the same thing. But now, all these like influencers who track this stuff are now saying you have to mix up your content now they're saying carousel photos yeah. they're saying not just video they're saying feed the algorithm oh, that's it's like no we can't keep trying we can't keep yeah. and i think each platform serves a purpose right sure. youtube is where people go to get educated yeah they're gonna spend high watch time um and now I'm learning shorts. Yep. So I recorded a video that was one minute and two seconds. And yep. I was like, why is it not allowing me to go to shorts? <laughs> so I had to clip the end of the video. So there's just so many things that the social media piece is yeah. time consuming. It's yeah. taxing. It's yeah. trying to understand. Yeah, it's too much. It's a full-time job. Yeah. It is. It's a full-time job. Uh, so I think next after this, I'll show you my walkthrough Jared, how on how I try to be. If she doesn't see the creator thing. Really? I know. It's weird. It does not show up at all. I only got the creator option when I first switched it to professional. So oh, maybe right. she already is a creator? Maybe she is a creator? When you first switched You're already it, creating? You just now switch it? I don't you know. You singing and dancing? Um, real estate agent. Okay, so professional account, real estate agent. Um, you could add in your phone if you wanted to display that information. And... She started calling and I told her we were... Do, 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 do. Personal details. I don't see which one you are. Okay. Honestly, though, oh, here we go, right here. Switch to creator account. If oh. you want to. So you are a bit. You were, uh, yeah, read the other one. So you were, you were business. Oh, it was so funny. All of them are always different. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Facebook, so, Instagram. Cool. The difference on one computer to a different computer for whatever reason, they all look different. So let's. He had to go find it somewhere. Let's keep the party going. <laughs> So a um, couple more tips, all right? So now that you're a professional account, you're going to have all that access to that additional information. You could connect your Facebook page, which is right down here. Um, I would display that you're a real estate agent. I would display your contact info. I would have an action button. Fill all this in. With any of these platforms, um, when you take the time to fill in all the information, I truly believe that they're going to reward you, right? Um, let's talk about your bio. Your bio is incredibly important. If you haven't optimized your bio, we should sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one because what you write in here also affects the algorithm. Um, people can pop up. Like if, if, say I'm following, I don't know, Ben Goss, the real estate agent, and I forgot him. I, I met him at one point. I could type in real estate agent on Instagram in theory. And if Ben has that in his profile and he has that in, enough in his, in his bio, his information should pop up. Oh, there's that guy, Ben. I forgot his name, but he popped up real estate agent. So what you write in here matters. I'm a big believer in you should be mentioning your lo location, where you're in and where you serve so people know where you're at. So if I pop on your profile and I'm deciding whether or not I'm going to follow you, are you even in right Colorado Springs? Are you in Colorado? Are you somewhere else? Because that affects whether or not I'm going to follow you, right? So if we really want to get kind of granular here, what you put in here and what you're going to be sharing on your um, on your Instagram profile is important. So you can see here, I wrote sharing real estate tools, resources, classes, and marketing ideas. Title insurance, Chicago title, Colorado, right? Um, and then I've got a call to action because you can add in links, right? So I say, hey, you know, because I ran out of characters here, so I had to keep it short, but I said, join my list. And if they click that link, it takes them to a landing page where they can plug in their email and then get emails from me. Right. And now I'm trying to become multi-channel where now they're seeing me on different channels. 
Any questions on that? All right, moving on. So let's do this. I want to go through a real example of me scheduling out a piece of content that will post to, I think, six, seven different platforms. Is that something that might be valuable? Yeah. Okay. One yes. <laughs> We're going to do it then. All right. So uh, first things first, ChatGPT, we've all at least dabbled with it. Anyone have ChatGPT4? Yeah. Only four. ChatGPT4, it's $20 a month. Oh, and... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell you all on ChatGPT4 right now, okay? So check this out. So I'm on ChatGPT4. Let's see uh, if the hotspot can pick this up. So this is my workflow if I want to create content. I'm a big believer in video. I want people to have a relationship with me before they even meet me, right? My voice, my, mo my movements, what I do, all my stuff. Um, because I can build rapport faster in this virtual uh, environment. Here we are in 2024. So what I'm going to do is I create a ton of video content. And then um, I edit some of it if I'm in a hurry or I outsource it. I've got a video editor who I outsource all my content to. If it's short form video that's 90 seconds or less, I have a relationship with them where I pay them $5 per video to edit my content. Um, I don't have time to edit all these videos because I'm posting content uh, multiple times every single week. So he actually just sent me over a batch of a few new videos and we're going to actually post, we're going to schedule out one of these right now. Um, let's do, 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 what's this one? What's going on in my real estate? Earnest money, let's talk about let's talk I think about you earnest. can make great video content for just $400. You just need three things. You need a microphone, a smartphone, and a gimbal. This right here is the DJI Lavalier microphone. You get two of them. I love it. One for you, one for a friend. Plug it into your phone, DSLR camera, plug it into your computer, whatever. Next up, what I'm picking up right here is a gimbal. It balances my smartphone when I have it for recording, okay? This is the DJI Osmo 6, which is 150 bucks. Check it out. Check out any brand that can balance your phone. Look at that. There's the shadow right there. Last but not least, smartphone. Bump up the video quality settings to 4K if they're not already there, right? You can shoot higher quality video. I've got an iPhone right here. It works great. Would love to know what you're using. Let me know in the comments below. Jared Larkin, Chicago Title. So that's something I'm going to schedule right now in a post. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to drag and drop it into chat GPT. Now, this is where we're going to rely on that hotspot. Hopefully, we can get it in here. But while it's doing that in the background, um, what we're going to do next step is so we're going to pump it into ChatGPT. ChatGPT is automatically going to watch this video. Give me my caption. Give me my hashtags. Give me my video title. Give me all of my information so that I don't have to do it. Because I hate doing all that. It can even give me thumbnails now within ChatGPT. This technology is evolving so fast. This is only on the four. This is only on four. Yeah. So 20 bucks a month for ChatGPT4, it's uploading. Okay, now this is my workflow. So while that's uploading, next steps are this, is I'm going to go to facebook.com. Now here's the deal is you can't schedule out, unless someone knows a loophole, you can't schedule out content on your personal Facebook, which is a bummer. But the be next best thing is I can schedule out content to my Instagram account, right, as well as my Facebook page, and then all of my other accounts. So here you are on my Facebook business page. And what I want to do is I want to schedule out my next, my next piece of content. I found doing this, if I don't have stuff scheduled out, I'm probably not going to post anything at all. So this is something that I've really leaned into this year is just posting content consistently. And it's only going to happen if I have it scheduled out. My goal is at least two videos per week for the entire year. So I have to always have two booked out. Um, and I have, uh, I'm running behind. So this is perfect. So let's do this. I'm going to switch into my Facebook business page, which is a little bit confusing. There's your personal Facebook page and then your Facebook business page. And you can switch in between them to do certain things. I went into my Facebook page. I switched into it, which now because I switched into it, you can see here, I can post within it. Okay. One other quick tip. If you haven't done this for a minute with a Facebook page, Right here, these three dots, if you click on them, you can scroll down and invite your friends, all right? You can invite your people. You have to switch back out into your personal account because they're your personal friends. But you can invite people to like or follow your page, which will now have more people possibly see your content when you post on your page. So what I like to do is I like to post reels, right? Typically, videos 90 seconds or less. 
So what I'll do is I could click on this. Um, there's a couple different ways you could get there. Um, but let me click on real and see if this wants to load. Let's pop over to chat GPT. I have no idea if this is uploading. It looks like it's still cranking along there. Um, but what I could do now is I could take that video. I could drop it into here and I can, um, I can either upload it here. I can also go into the back to the business center. looks like it, uh, it might've froze up here. Let's try again. Um, and I'm going to schedule this out, right? I think you can make great video content for just $400. Just need to just turn that off because that's annoying um that is not where i want to be pop back over here let's see if this worked read this video did it work oh no it's still uploading okay so what we want to do is we want to get back to um our business center and it's been a second since i've done this but I want to go to the section where I can uh, schedule out my posts, which, of course, is very convoluted, which I'm looking for right now. And uh, what's also fun about this, as Ben mentioned earlier, is that um, this can vary for different people. Um, and what I want to do is I want to create a post and I want to schedule it out. So let's click on here to planner. Here it is. Oh, come on back. Planner. The planner is where now you can see anything that I have scheduled that's coming up. And it probably has nothing. Okay, it's got one, right? Now I'm back in the planner. And what I wanna do is I want to create a reel back here. It could be a reel, it could be a post. You can even plan out stories, which I mean, if you had enough time, that would be pretty uh, amazing, I guess, to always have stories scheduled out. And I, now I'm going to, because I have my Facebook and Instagram account connected, I am now gonna say, hey, post it to both of these right? Um, let's post this video. This is going to take, I think a, you can make this is gonna take an hour. Oh no, we're, we're cranking along here. We're at 5%. Pause that. Um, now I can write in what chat GPT is going to tell me to do, uh, if it ever loads, but in theory, if this loaded faster, it would have already done it. And I would say, Hey, I'm posting this to Instagram, write my caption for me. Give me hashtags, right? This is ideally uh, with the objective of um, showing this to real estate agents who want to create video content because that's what this video is about. And it will take all this into consideration. The most important stuff with AI when you're using any of this is the prompt. What the heck you write in there is the most important factor of what you get for your output, right? The input is going to affect the output, right? It does a pretty darn good job. Most of the time, I might tweak it a little bit. But honestly, it, it's kind of dialed in what I want to say and who I am that it's pretty darn good. If I want additional hashtags, you can have up to 30, right? Maybe it gave me five in the initial post. I could say, hey, give me 25 more hashtags that focus in on these keywords and it's going to do it for you, right? So assuming I did all that and it worked and it uploaded, I would then come back over here uh, to Facebook and the reel will be uploaded. I would then copy and paste that caption right here uh, where the caption reel is, right? Um, I could then change my thumbnail, all right? Um, what's great is ChatGPT. You could even say, hey, now based on this video and what you know, create like 10 thumbnails for me. And it'll just go at it and make 10 thumbnails for you. And you could pick one, right? Um, again, it's all about we have to have it as easy as possible, right? Then you could have a custom thumbnail or you could choose a frame on here as your thumbnail. I always upload one, right? Assuming we did all this and we're done, the next step is just to schedule out the day and time that you want this to post, right? Now, the question is, what, what time do you want it to post on, right? Well, guess what? Once we've all switched over to professional accounts, you can look at the analytics and see what day and time and what time people, most people are on your platform. I'll show you how to do it right now. Um, so if I share my uh, phone here, MacBook Pro, come on in, MacBook Pro, maybe. There it is. Boom, boom. Um, it's been a second since I've done this, but I'm on my profile here. If I click right in the middle on professional dashboard, let's click on that. It should start giving me insights, right? So from March 3rd to April 1st, the last trailing month, I've reached 5.7 thousand accounts. I'm up 82%, right? Um, I've engaged with 847 accounts. Um, t total followers, 1.2, content you shared, et cetera. I can now go into this information, right? I could look at my followers. 
I can see um, my overall followers. I can see follow, unfollow. I can see where these people are. I can see my age range. I can see my gender. But down here at the bottom is the one I want to look at is I want to look at most active days and times, right? So right now it's under hours. And if I click on this, I can see what time of day people flow on. And for me, for most of my followers, right, you can see kind of peaks around 9 a.m. That tells me if I want to be strategic with my content, right? Um, and I can look at this nitty gritty day by day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but mostly it picks up starting at nine and kind of peaks at noon. So for me, when I schedule my content, post my content, I want it to come out probably right around, say, 8.45 a.m., 8.50 a.m., because I want to catch all the people who are going to be on social and then have it go through the peak with my best chances of the algorithm hitting. Make sense? So when I schedule my content, I usually schedule it around that time, okay? So that's how I figured out who, when I'm going to schedule. Backing out of this, final step is uh, once I've finished scheduling this and I have it in my planner, it's ready to go for that day and time. Now, I'm done, okay? I'm not, I don't have to post it to all the other platforms because I use a third-party company called Repurpose.io. There's a million of them out there. Um, I was recommended this one by someone I trust called repurpose.io. It's $19 per month, and it allows me to post to a variety of different platforms. Um, and it's going to take that content once it gets scheduled and posted to Instagram and automatically, uh, within two hours, upload it to all the other platforms and push it out on there with that video piece with the content. So you can see here, this is the workflow. All it's saying is, hey, take anything post from Instagram and post it to this platform. So you can see here, it pushes it out. I've got Pinterest, I've got Twitter, I've got LinkedIn, I've got Twik, TikTok, and I've got YouTube. So I've got five different additional um, channels, right? If there's a channel here that's missing that you have, of course, you can add additional workflows and you can push it out, right? Um, why do I love this? I love this because I'm never going to take the time to push all these out there. I'm now getting more mileage on all my content and it's automatically um, now reaching all these other platforms and I'm not going to do it, right? I just got, I get weekly algorithm analytics from, from LinkedIn. I literally never go on LinkedIn, but let me just, I just got one, right? It, it, told, it tells me like how many views I'm getting on my stuff from just real estate people I'm connected with. Let's see if I deleted it. Uh, like I want to say, oh yeah, okay. Like your post got 760 impressions this week. 760 people saw my content on something that I literally don't even touch, right? It's just free, free eyeballs essentially, right? So go ahead, question. On the repurpose I am, mm -hmm. Are you, is that you just post, you schedule that post and repurpose I am is automatically connected to it? Mm -hmm. And what about stills instead of video? Is it doing the same thing with your stills? Yeah, you can pull in that content. And of course, you're gonna have to set it up, all right, pull in stills and then push it out to these these platforms that can take that content and post stills, okay, right? so you can have two different things going. Yep. Okay. Yep. So your Facebook business, you schedule it on there. Mm-hmm. It's gonna go from there to your personal Facebook. Nope. No. No, nope. that's the one catch. Because I haven't found a way to schedule to personal Facebook. Okay, so the automatic functionality outside of Repurpose IO is Instagram will post to Facebook. Correct. But only the page. The professional account does Correct. that post to a personal Facebook or only to? Let me let's clarify here. So when it comes to Facebook, you can have either a personal Facebook or a professional Facebook, which is fun, right? It's making it more confusing. And then you got your Facebook page. All right. I have not figured out a way to schedule through personal or professional. I've got a professional Facebook and I've tried to go down that rabbit hole and it hasn't worked. My content is getting posted automatically to the Facebook page, to the Instagram account, and then to... By the Facebook page, you're, you mean the business Facebook Correct, business Facebook page. business page, and then all of these accounts here. YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Pinterest, LinkedIn. So you have it set up where you go in and schedule it on Facebook mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. From there, it will go to Instagram. All of it. And all of the other ones using repurpose IO. So the only manual thing you have to do is put it on your personal Facebook. Just gotta schedule it out. I just have to schedule it out. What are you guys doing your editing? How are you doing the editing? This is my guy. 
bit.ly forward slash my video guy. Name's Shiraz. He's in Pakistan. Uh, he is incredibly talented. And bit.ly slash my video editing. Bit.ly, no, my video guy. How much you pay for this? So I, so here's what I do, guys. Here's what I do. I love Fiverr.com. Anyone ever use it, heard of it? Fiverr. Fiverr. This is it right here, Fiverr.com. Okay. Why do I love Fiverr.com? Because you can outsource cheap labor for anything over the internet. So I had, I had my logo created with like 20 revisions. I paid a guy 30 bucks, right? I had my video editing outsourced. I had a guy rebuild my entire website milehightitleguy.com for 250 bucks, right? Um, I had someone optimize my Google page and like do all these backlinks and, and fancy things. So anyway, I've got all these contacts because one, I'm doing it for my business. And then two, once I find someone good, I got to be a resource for all of you and share these people with you, right? It's another extension of how I can help you. So how do I find video editors that are good? Um, I hire a bunch of them and I give them all the same task. I say, hey, here's a video. I typically try to find people that are gonna charge anywhere between $5 a video up to my max $30 a video if I think they're really good. And I give them all the same task. I say, this is the song, this is the video, this is what I want, go. And I just did this again. I just did 14 more people for a different type of video. And then I vet them and then I find the good ones. And then now I know who I'm working with. And they're doing all of your captions on there and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, so this guy, Shiraz, yeah. these videos, everything you see in here, the captions, all the graphics. Is it there? It is there, right? The sound effects. A smartphone. Any yeah. sound effect he adds. This right here is the DJI right? Lear microphone. And for those of you that have dabbled at all with video editing, this is hard to do. This takes time, right? This is like keyframing. This is one by one thing. So the fact that a guy is doing this for five bucks is crazy. I'll say this though, he's gotten more expensive. Now he's like 10 bucks a video, which is still phenomenal um, for this level of content, right? So I've gone out and vetted and find all the best people, right? You can see here, ChatGPT, he's plugging in all this stuff. He's doing the captions, right? He threw the money in there, which isn't actually there on the table. Um, so that's my guy and um, feel free to use him. <laughs> you know that money. I mean, <laughs> dude is that good though look at it landed right i mean look at the detail landed right on the table is that good so you don't even have to do that for every video either you could just have a select few and work your way up you don't have to you know kind of look at video or whatever yeah of course um i just know myself right like if i can just make the video like let me go to my other like this mile high title guy page I think like at almost every single video on here, right, is just shot with my smartphone. And that's what I teach in the other class is you can create great content with your smartphone, right? And then outsource it and add all the captions and effects and editing, right? Um, all this is just smartphone stuff. So I have to have it be as simplistic as possible. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. So all I need is I just need ideas and I need to shoot it and then I upload it to like a cloud drive, like Google or Dropbox. I give it to the video editor and then I'm done, right? Then I just have to, I have to schedule it. That's freaking awesome. So that's the goal, right? Yeah, we gotta make it easy. Otherwise we're not gonna do it. I, again, background in video production. I used to have the studio and all the fancy cameras and the lights and guess what? I never used it because it was so much work to set up and start and turn on the microphone. It's gotta be easy for me. It's gotta be in the moment. Otherwise I'm not gonna do it. And then I'm not gonna edit it because I don't have time to edit it. I, my best use of time is not editing. Let me outsource it to the guy. You got somebody to help you out can't, uh, holding the, the gamble over you. No, man. I do this all solo. I'm a one-man band. Yeah. I'm a one-man band, right? Like, look at <laughs> I'm holding. I have it all back there. I've got my gimbal. I've got my microphone. You saw the video. 400 bucks, right? This is it. DJI, uh, this is it. Uh, like probably four years ago. Yeah. He's thinking about getting it. That thing is freaking awesome. I mean, do you have it with you right now? I saw it. Yeah, yeah, I'll get it. It's back there. It's a gimbal. It's like 150 bucks. Yeah, these are great. DJI, DJI gimbal, 150 bucks. DJI microphones. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I paid. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of I hold the gimbal and I kind of, I'm out and about. I'm walking and talking. It's always different. No shame. People are staring at me like, what is that idiot doing? I'm just, just, don't care. Do not care. Do not care. Doesn't bother me, but just like actually taking videos, yeah, it doesn't feel natural. Yeah, girl doing that, yeah, nine year old, she's out there on the trampoline, filming herself. Like, it's just 
Yeah. It's a different. You got to get your reps in. It's hard. You got to get your reps in. You just got to. And here's, I always say this is like, if you don't like it, shoot it again. If you don't like it, don't post it, right? But at least if, if it's something you want to lean into, and again, it's not for everyone, right? But if it's something you want to lean into, this is what I found works works most efficiently, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to get in again. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Yeah, it looks like you just go bench press more. I know. He's not jacked enough. Oh. I know. For those of us that aren't using editing professionals at the moment... Um, is there a link for how you get closed caption on your videos or is there some sort of button you hit after you record? Like I use CapSub for most of my stuff. Does that have the ability to put? Captions? Oh yeah. Yeah. So I just edited this video last night and posted it. Um, so here's what we do, right? This is uh, oh, media loss cause I deleted it. Perfect. Um, let's take it out of the trash can. Oh, and you So, do you guys see what program he's on? So, it's this program called CapCut, and it, it's a video editing software. It, yeah, it's free, correct, Jared? It's free. Oh. It's free. We do a whole class on it. What's going on? Here we go. We got Dodgeball coming up in a couple So, check days. this out, right? It's going down. Um, let me take a video real quick. Uh, they all have captions on them. Shoot. Let's just do this. Let me just pretend, right? Let me pretend this doesn't have captions on it, right? Um, this is your video within CapCut, completely free editing system. Um, if you want to build the courage and to create a video, we can do a video workshop and you can leave the class with a video. Um, but what we do is up here, top left corner under text. When we click on text right here, left, it says auto captions. If I click on auto captions and generate, it automatically picks up what I'm saying. And I'd say it's pretty darn perfect, like 99% perfect. It just gets names wrong, but other than that, it's pretty good. And it will automatically overlay all the captions. And I actually did this, like these captions that you're seeing right now are from CapCut, first where you can pick day. different styles. What's going on? Here we go. Right? We have dodgeball coming up in a couple of days. It's going down. We got the teams lined up on the brackets, starting from the top. We so you get it. It's all through CapCut, completely free. Awesome. Yeah, great question. Um, I know we're kind of coming up here. We got about seven minutes left. Um, any other questions? Which one is it on the DJI? DJI Osmo 6. This one. I think it's the 6. Yeah. Yeah, DJI Osmo Mobile 6, 150 bucks. Yep. And then these, you can get the package deal if you want to get the microphones. That's what I have on right here. You can get it both for about just under 400 bucks. And they're very good microphones. So... That's that. Um, I will dabble real quick for the last five minutes on advertising, which we're going to dive into in the class if you want to come to it. So getting back again to like content, right? And, and when I'm running and for the longest time, like when I just had this Instagram account, it's all just personal content. Um, primarily you can see here, it's just, it's my kids, it's my family, it's vacations, right? Um, it's just, I like to fly my drone. It's just kind of fun things that I like to do. Um, but in the background, I'm running targeted ads to exactly who I want to see them. So has anyone ever boosted a post before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How'd that go? Not great. Yeah. It's that's usually, that's, not that's usually <laughs> the answer. Yeah. It's usually a waste of money, right? You I can take my ads haven't gone great either. Yeah. So here's the deal, right? I could take this, I could boost it. Um, and it's a good first step if you want to throw some money in and just throw it down the drain. Um, you can do that, right? So it's great. It's a good first step, right? Here's what happens, right? When you run an ad and you boost it, unfortunately, Facebook, Instagram, Meta doesn't give you all of the targeting stuff that you can do that you need to do to really take every dollar that you're spending and put it in front of exactly who you want. And boosting is like a big waste of money. We don't want to boost. What we want to do is we want to run ads, but let's back up here. What I'm talking about running ads, typically most of us, when we think running ads, okay, what's the goal of running ads? It's because we want to generate leads, right? You can do that. We can have a whole other class on that. But I truly believe before you run any sort of ad to generate leads, you need to run ads to stay in front of your people. I fundamentally believe anyone who has repeat or referral business, right? Whether they own a business or in sales and you rely on referral and repeat business, we need to stay in front of them. And 
I mentioned earlier, the algorithm is a pain, right? It, when you post something, only a small percent of people see it. How do we break through that algorithm? We run low cost, $1 per day, targeted Facebook and Instagram ads to exactly who we want to see them. In the back of Facebook called the Meta Business Suite back here, uh, not this page, I'm going to trash can this because we're at 64%. That never went anywhere. Um, you can run targeted ads to some very important categories. One of them being you can upload a list. So I'm a huge data nerd. Um, I know some of us might be data nerds. Uh, you can take your database. You can take phone numbers. You can take email addresses. You can upload that data, right? We might have a database list. You can upload it into the Meta Business Suite. It's going to go out and find uh, your contacts. And then you can say, hey, run an ad to just these people, just my 100 people in my database, right? Just my 200, you know, whatever people in my farm area. So how are agents using this, right? Back here, create audience. It's called customer lists. We go over this in the class. You can upload contact info. Uh, switch out of this. Um, Database list, um, if you were farming, none of you are. We can upload farm areas. You can target your farm area. Um, people have paid for leads where we have old leads or whatever. We upload their leads and we can target those people because when Bree signs up for an Instagram or Facebook account, she has to provide her email and her phone number. And we are just reverse engineering this and finding the contact info that match up to these profiles so we can run ads to them. So we run ads to your list. We also have the option of running ads to... Uh, let me just jump over to Mile High. Uh, also to our Instagram followers. So you can run ads to your Instagram followers. Um, you can run ads to people who like or follow your Facebook page. So earlier when I told you, hey, invite people to like or follow your Facebook page, anyone who likes or follows your Facebook page can now see your ad, right? Now, this is effective one because now we're not blasting a random group of people. We're just hitting our core group that needs to see us. Um, so let's say it's... 1,000 people, 2,000 people. Well, here's the metrics. There's a lot of ways to spend slash waste money in this business, right? We've probably all been there, right? One of us boosted a post. Perfect. Me too. I've wasted, wasted a couple hundred bucks. Um, we can now spend $1. And on average, for every $1 that you spend, that dollar will reach and show whatever piece of content you want as an advertisement to roughly about 200 people. So that's about a half a penny to put whatever message or content that you want in front of exactly who you want. I don't know anything cheaper out there when it comes to marketing. Okay. And this runs on autopilot. So what we do, what we'll cover in this class is we set these ads. Usually we run them for a month and we can schedule them to run out. Here's one that runs for January. And then here's the next one that runs for February, for March. And then you're top of mind, your content, whatever it is, a photo, a video, anything you want, pops up in front of exa those people's feeds from time to time in the stories, in the feed, in the reels. Yep, there's Brie again. Up oh, there's Brent again, right? And it's just top of mind brand awareness.